we're going to do a mass experiment, a new kind of mass experiment of what happens when you tell people the truth and see what happens. My job is to tell people the truth, and if Americans have an appetite for that, um, that I will be president. This is a time to bring America back together. We have been torn apart, and if anyone can bring it back together, it's the Kennedys. I hope that what he can do is to break through by just being himself, being his honest uh, self, very selfless, very focused on doing the right thing, and hopefully people will be able to see that, but we are absolutely up against a major, major media wall. The reason people are having fights with their family is because the families were being lied to about information and believing some family members believe the lies, some did not. And that caused the polarization and it amplifies the vitriol and the, the po it poisons all of society when the government is lying, when the media is lying to you, when the trusted sources of information aren't, can no longer be trusted. You know, it's really hard to tell how many people are awake and have you know, this, how much this is exposed to the average American because we're living in a sea of propaganda and censorship. What's happened here today is that you have lifelong Republicans, lifelong independents, lifelong Democrats. It's time that we ended this schism. The people standing here today do not identify with any political party. We identify with unity, with health, with freedom. That's what's important about today. My husband, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., is going to come out and make a very important announcement. Are you ready for this? The next President of the United States, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. My mission over the next 18 months of this campaign and over my throughout my presidency will be to end the corrupt merger of state and corporate power that is threatening now, is threatening now to impose a new kind of corporate feudalism on our country, to poison our, our children and our people with, with chemicals and pharmaceutical drugs, to strip mine our assets, to hollow out the middle class and keep us in a constant state of war. These lockdowns were a war on the poor, and they were a war on American children. There's been a systematic attack on our middle class, and the coup de grace was the lockdown. The lockdown was the biggest shift in wealth in human history. I don't want you know, the Democratic Party to be the party of fear and pharma and war and censorship. <laughs> Fifty-five years ago last month, I sat as a 14-year-old boy behind my father as he announced his campaign for presidency of the United States. And my father at that time was in the same, in many ways, in the same position that I'm in today. He was running against a president of his own party. He was running against a war. He was running against. A, he was running at a time of unprecedented polarization in our country. And he had no chance of winning. My father, when he declared, had not a single molecule in him that he believed that he could win the Democratic nomination. And the day he died, they, he won the California primary, the most urban state in this country, and the same day the South Dakota primary, the most rural. He had succeeded in uniting America. I was with my dad when he died in Los Angeles. And we brought him back to New York, and then we brought him from Penn Station in New York 
to Union Station in Washington, D.C. Normally, that's a two and a half hour train ride, but it took us seven and a half hours because there were two million people on the tracks. And that I will never forget as a 14 year old boy what I saw from the windows of that train that day. In all of the urban train stations in Trenton and Newark and Philadelphia and Baltimore, there were, they were crowded with black and white men singing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. God talks to human beings through many factors, through each other, through organized religion, through the great books of those religions, through wise people, through art and music and uh, literature and poetry, but nowhere with such detail and grace and color and joy as through creation. When we destroy a species, when we destroy a special place, we're diminishing our capacity to sense the divine, understand who God is and what our own potential is as human beings. We deserve a president in this country who cares about these things and who talks about these things to the American people. My father, when he came back one time from the Delta, he said, we were all at the dinner table when he came in, and he said, I was in a tar paper shack today. I was smaller than this dining room, and there were two families living there, and the, the children get one meal a day. And when you get older, I want you to help those people. And when we would go into Southeast Washington or Appalachia, he would say to us, these are your people. These are Kennedy people. He said, the other people, the, the big shots, the corporations, the millionaires don't need the Kennedys. They have lobbyists. They have PR firms. They have lawyers. And he said, these are your people. And these are the people you need to spend your life helping. And when I'm president, I'm going to be president for those people. We are going to really take back this country. You give me a piece of ground and a sword, and I am going to take back this country with your help, the help of all the homeless Republicans and Democrats and independents who are Americans first. Thank you all very much.